1 and 2.7 kilograms of food a day. That's over 365 kilograms a year per person, and more than 28,800 kilograms over the course of a lifetime. And every last scrap makes its way through the digestive system. Comprised of 10 organs, covering 9 meters, and containing over 20 specialized cell types, this is one of the most diverse and complicated systems in the human body. Its parts continuously work in unison to fulfill a singular task, transforming the raw materials of your food into the nutrients and energy that keep you alive. Spanning the entire length of your torso, the digestive system has four main components. First, there's the gastrointestinal tract, a twisting channel that transports your food and has an internal surface area of between 30 and 40 square meters enough to cover half a badminton court. Second, there's the pancreas, gallbladder, and liver, a trio of organs that break down food using an array of special juices. Third, the body's enzymes, hormones, nerves, and blood all work together to break down food, modulate the digestive process, and deliver its final products. Finally, there's the mesentery, a large stretch of tissue that supports and positions all your digestive organs in the abdomen enabling them to do their jobs. The digestive process begins before food even hits your tongue. Anticipating a tasty morsel, glands in your mouth start to pump out saliva. We produce about 1.5 liters of this liquid each day. Once inside your mouth, chewing combines with the sloshing saliva to turn food into a moist lump called the corpus. Enzymes present in the saliva break down any starch then your food finds itself at the rim of a 25 centimeter long tube called the esophagus, down which it must plunge to reach the stomach. Nerves in the surrounding esophageal tissue sense the bolus's presence and trigger peristalsis, a series of defined muscular contractions. That propels the food into the stomach, where it's left at the mercy of the muscular stomach walls, which pound the bolus, breaking it into chunks. Hormones secreted by cells in the lining trigger the release of acids and enzyme-rich juices from the stomach wall that start to dissolve the food and break down its proteins. These hormones also alert the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder to produce digestive juices and transfer bile, a yellowish-green liquid that digests fat, in preparation for the next stage. After three hours inside the stomach, the once shapely bolus is now a frothy liquid called chyme, and it's ready to move into the small intestine. The liver sends bile to the gallbladder, which secretes it into the first portion of the small intestine, called the duodenum. Here, it dissolves the fats floating in the slurry of chyme so they can be easily digested by the pancreatic and intestinal juices that have leached onto the scene. These enzyme-rich juices break the fat molecules down into fatty acids and glycerol for easier absorption into the body. The enzymes also carry out the final deconstruction of proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into glucose. This happens in the small intestine's lower regions, the jejunum and ileum, which are coated in millions of tiny projections called villi. These create a huge surface area to maximize molecule absorption and transference into the bloodstream. The blood takes them on the final leg of their journey to feed the body's organs and tissues. But it's not over quite yet. Leftover fiber, water, and dead cells sloughed off during digestion make it into the large intestine, also known as the colon. The body drains out most of the remaining fluid through the intestinal wall. What's left is a soft mass called stool. The colon squeezes this byproduct into a pouch called the rectum, where nerves sense it expanding and tell the body when it's time to expel the waste. The byproducts of digestion exit through the anus and the food's long journey, typically lasting between 30 and 40 hours, is finally complete. TED-Ed is a nonprofit. If you value our work, please consider supporting it on patreon.com slash TED-Ed. Wow.
Hold on, let me put that off. Give me a moment, let me get out of here. Okay, so let me share this. Now, isn't that amazing? I mean, when I watched that, I went, wow. We eat and we don't realize. And so, I mean, my hope is that at the end of this time, you will appreciate your body. You will appreciate what is inside you, even though you do not see it. My hope is at the end of this time, you will spend more time to honor your system and that we'll be more careful what we put into our system. Did you see that? It takes, for each food, that bolus of bread or that, sorry, that slice of bread, that um, meat, that, put, that thing you take, look at the journey it goes through to finally come out. It takes about 30 to 40 hours for it to finish its complete journey and come out as um, as two look at the different part of your system right from your mouth that the amount of saliva you produce in a day about 1.5 liters in a day uh, can you mute please i i mute everybody but some people unmute themselves by mistake please if you find yourself muted, can you mute yourself please thank you um you find that you produce this amount of saliva and that from the moment that you are you you smell food your mouth begins to produce saliva and then the food everything in your body has a purpose never believe don't let anybody tell you that this does not have a purpose let's cut it off unfortunately because of lifestyle some things get inflamed but there's nothing no matter how tiny it is and we will look at that as we go on in this journey of knowing your body better. Because you cannot, there's a saying that when you don't know the use of something, you abuse it. Many times we've been abusing our bodies because we really do not understand the use of it and the importance of the structures. So, and that's why we are starting today, this series, and uh, it's going to continue every week. We are starting with the gut. We are actually, next week or two weeks, and we are actually going to look at the amount of bacteria you have in your system and how that affects your brain. You can imagine, you know, it's amazing. You have more bacteria in your system than you have body cells. And how a lot of bacteria, you know, you have removed all the good ones and replaced them with bad ones. And so how the bacteria that is found in your body affects your health and your brain health. And so please stay tuned to look into that. We have very interesting you know, topics that helps you to understand your body. So let's continue with understanding the gut um, as a journey. So we are starting from scratch. This is, um, this is, uh, this is body 101. <laughs> You know, Corona, yeah, this is, this is body, I'm, I'm making this as simple, you know, um, so please, this is not a, I'm not teaching medical students, I'm taking information that, you know, might be technical, but I'm trying to make it in a simple way, so that you can take ownership of your health. You can see that in the world we are today, it's important for everyone to begin to take ownership of their wellness. You cannot depend on any, you cannot depend on others to help you to be well. You know, um, coronary artery, is, ischemic stroke, diabetes, and some specific cancer, which until recently were common only in high income countries, are now becoming the dominant sources of morbidity and mortality worldwide because the world has become a global village. And so, we, you know, we are all, you know, living alike and eating alike now and so the, and that tells us if that is the case that tells us that a lot of ill health a lot of diseases are as a result of lifestyle as a result of the things we take in research reveals that 
about 80% of diseases are related to, in origin, uh, to food in origin, while the remaining 20% might be caused by environment, hereditary, hygiene, behavior. 80%. So you can imagine if I'm more conscious about my gut health, I can reduce, you know, issues of diseases by almost 80%. And I asked the question, why is this so? And I said simply, I said the body is a glorified clay. You know, that is, my, that is uh, what I believe. The body is a glorified clay. And why do I believe this? Hold on, what my, this is not moving down. Okay. Why do I believe this, that the body is glorified clay? You know, I told you at the beginning that my journey with this started after reading the book of Genesis. And so I was interested in knowing what was the constituent of the body and what was the constituent of the soil. And I found out that the soil, that sand you, you hold in your hand, is composed of all these chemicals, sodium, chlorine, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sulfur, phosphorus, carbon, nitrogen. And the body fluid is composed of the same thing sodium chloride hydrogen carbonate calcium magnesium potassium when you burn the body and you have the dust that is left what you have left is um is 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 this goes back to the soil um somebody is raising i'm sorry it's going back can you the person raising her hand just give me a moment let me go through this so that i'm not going back and forth i'll just send a message um Okay, sorry, give me a moment. Let me see what was what, on here. Oh, somebody can't hear me. Um, I can't, um, I think that might, that might be um, something to do with you. Um, can, can, can I be heard? Somebody said you she can. can't hear me. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, so that means, please, that person that says you, you, yeah, you can't you, hear me. Yes, we're hearing you. It, it has I to do with you. It has to do with your laptop, with whatever you are using. So um, can, can you check that? Um, thank you. Okay, let me continue. Yeah. Um, okay, so I found out that the constituent of the soil is the same constituent of the body. Basically, that tells me that my body is simply glorified sand. Meaning that what I need to maintain this body and what I need to make this body healthy can be found in the soil. How do we get the nutrient from the soil into the body? Through the gut. That is why the gut is crucial in what we are talking about. Because the nutrient, so my body is made up of soil. My body is made up of sand. The sand, the sod, and that sand is made up of sodium, potassium, calcium, and all these things that makes up my body. And my body cannot exist or cannot function without these things. Now, it passes through where? The gut. Meaning that my gut health is so crucial in my total health. Because if my, if my engine house, the engine house of my car, my, the, the blender, you know, the thing that, you know, will take the food and convert it because my body cannot use rice as it is. My body cannot use plantain. My body cannot use um, a meat as it is. My body must break it down to the tiniest bit in order for it to cross the boundaries of my intestine into my bloodstream. Every cell in my body needs this to survive. But my body needs to make it into the smallest unit. And that work is done by my gut. And so if my gut is not in the best state of my, uh, in the best state, it cannot do this job and then my health is going to be impaired. And I just shared the scriptures that for me led me into this study about food. It says that in Genesis 1:29, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has food with seed in it, and they'll be yours for food. And then in Ezekiel 47, it says, food trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will, wither, will not wither, nor will their food fail every month. They bear because the water from the sanctuary flows for them, and their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. Amazing. Did you see that? Healing. Meaning that 
my body is supposed to get these things, you know, on a regular basis for healing. Remember I said something, that the body is a self-maintaining organism, you know, that we are self-maintaining, self-renewal. And so as I feed on these fruits and vegetables in their right proportion, in the way they are supposed to renew, revitalize, and help my system, heal my system. And I will talk a bit more about why does our system need healing? And I think our doctor will talk about that. So let me quickly move on. You know, our food contains of protein, carbohydrate, fat and oil, minerals and vitamins, and water. And um, this PowerPoint will be on our website. So I'm not going to be reading everything because I've put in a lot of information so that afterwards you can actually go and look at it and learn more. The food you eat affects your mental output. It affects your memory, affects your concentration, affects your intelligence, affects your nervous system, affects the function of your nerves, your heart function, your muscle function, your resistance to infection. Can you imagine your productivity, your energy state, your work output, how much you are able to achieve in a given time? All these are affected by what you eat. How can, knowing and understanding this really makes it it's a requirement for us to be more watchful and say, what is entering my gut? What is entering my gut? We have seen this in the video that your gut is made up of all of this. You know, God has made it amazing. You have your mouth, your salivary gland, your oesophagus, your stomach, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your large intestine, your small intestine. Every single one of them is part of this amazing journey, amazing work you do. And I'll just talk briefly on this, you know, for you to see your major digestion of that bread, carbohydrate, that tuber that you eat starts in the mouth, from your mouth. That's why, you know, we are asked to chew our food well and coat it with enough digestive enzymes because you want it to be broken. If it's not well broken down, then it is, it's not going to release its nutrients to you. And so chewing our food well is the first place to go. And then the first digestion of, um, the final digestion of protein and first digestion of fat takes place in the small intestine. The first digestion of protein will take place in the stomach. Yeah, and that's why the stomach, you know, you have, is, is, you know, you have acid being produced. And then fat digestion is in the small intestine. And bile from the gallbladder is so important. And, by, and the bile, you know, is one, is, is one, and the reason we are having a lot of obesity issues right now is that many of us are not refilling our bile store. And um, because the bile, you know, when you kill chicken, you say the bile, you shouldn't allow it to burst because it's very bitter. Many of us, we don't eat things that are bitter anymore. Only things that are very sweet. You can see the liver and the gallbladder for this. Can, can you please mute yourself if you find yourself unmuted? Somebody is unmuted again. I muted everybody, but sometimes some people by mistake unmute themselves. Can you please mute yourself? Sorry, sorry about that. I, I, I need maybe I'm, I will not give uh, privileges for unmuting anymore because people are unmuting themselves without realizing they're interfering. Um, give me a moment. Let me, I need to see who is this. Okay, let me just keep going with this. Okay, give me a moment. I need to check who this is. Okay, that was Anne. Please don't unmute yourself again. Anne, believe. You have unmuted yourself again. Please keep okay. an active. Can you keep yourself muted, please? I keep muting you, but you unmute yourself. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe you keep unmuting yourself. I might have to remove you if you keep unmuting yourself. I mute you, you keep unmuting yourself. 
Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, let me continue with the presentation. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to zero in as I, as I round off this for the doctor to come and talk, you know, and to answer some questions is, um, um, you know, so the GIT, the gastrointestinal, this our track is so, is that is where absorption of your iron, vitamins, calcium, you know, um, glycerol, fatty acid, amino acid, everything that your body needs is absorbed through these tubes that you are seeing. This tube, this small intestine, everything. See, it is called, it is the length. When you stretch it, it is the length of like half a bad, 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 badminton court. That is how large it is. And it has been made large so that all the absorptions that need to take place, it will take place and your body will get the nutrient. Now I'm going to close by rounding, by focusing on one organ and the liver. The liver, and the reason I'm choosing the liver, and as we go on, we are going to be checking different organs. We are going to look at the kidney, we are going to look at adrenals, we are going to look at the different body parts and their roles and functions, you know, as we continue in this our series. But today I'm starting with the liver because that is the powerhouse. Your liver is the biggest organ in your, in your in, 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 it's the second largest organ. Your first, the largest organ is your skin. The liver is the second largest organ. It is important for storage. It stores your food. So it stores all the, the, the nutrients that you are not using until they are cold. And then actually the fat soluble ones. It stores, um, it's important for immunity. It, 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 it breaks down your nutrient to a tiny bit for you. It helps your body to, 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 to synthesize protein. It helps your body to balance. It's important in producing bile. bile. It's important in producing a protein called albumin, which is very important for homeostasis because that determines the salt balance. It will determine the albumin. It does what allows your body not for your body not to swell. You know, um, when you have um, the, the, the albumin ratio in your, in your cells, in, in your blood, it's so important, these tiny things. Clotting factor, it, it, it helps you store vitamin A, D, B12, K, E. It helps you store glycogen. It helps you store iron. Your body cannot survive without iron. Every cell needs iron because iron is what carries, because, you know, iron is what, you know, helps you to carry oxygen. The the the, the 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 oxygen carrying capacity of your blood is dependent on iron, and so you can see that all these things are important. I have put a a, a few PowerPoint here on the roles of some of these vitamins, and we will take another class to really look at them very well. You can see what vitamin A is very important for. Vitamin A, vision, immune defense, bone normal cell development, even for reproduction. Vitamin D is important for, for your brain, is important for maturation of your cells, including your immune system. Many of us are not in the sun anymore. That's your best source of vitamin D. We need sometimes to take a walk, especially with this lockdown. Go out and sit for 30 minutes in the sun. We say that the sun between nine and 10 in the morning, I think, doctor, please, you correct me if I'm wrong, and between between five and six, you know, in the evening, that is like the best time between nine, 10, 11, 12, and then between five, six, if you are um, wherever you are, you know, those are like where you, you know, spend time getting some sun. The vitamin E is the body's main defense system. It defends against oxidation, oxidative. We, we all hear about antioxidant, that many cells are being destroyed because of, uh, the, the, because of oxidation, and we are, we don't have enough nutrients to mop up this this um, you know uh, free radicals as we call them that are being put uh, that are being 
produced in your body. Your liver converts ammonia. Ammonia, you get it every, every time you eat your protein food, you release ammonia. Ammonia is toxic to your body. Your liver will, will turn it to urea. Your liver will break down the, all the toxic substances. You know, do you know how many toxic substances you are exposed to every day? Toxin from food, toxin, the food we eat now, all the pesticides, the chemicals that are used that are, by the time you get your food, huh, forget it. The amount of chemicals that is on that food that you are eating, but your body has been designed to detoxify it. Your, your, your hair products, your cleaning products in the house, the smoke from the car, the smoke from the cooker, the smoke, just name it. Our bodies are bombarded every day. And imagine when your liver is not working well. Your body is not able to detoxify this. And this toxin enters directly into your bloodstream. And your cells will pick them up, thinking they are food. Your liver is also produces, contains immune cells that we capture B bacteria because as you are eating when you open your mouth to eat bacteria all of those things are entering your liver is working to do clean job cleaner cleaner of your body when you know this it's important that you want to help my i want to help my liver to do a good job you can you know when the liver is not healthy the, you have liver diseases hepatitis fatty liver fibrosis and cirrhosis your liver is irreplaceable a liver can only be replaced only by liver. But however, the good news is that your liver has ability to regenerate itself. I had an amazing testimony of a woman that years ago had told, was told that her liver was damaged and she needed only a transplant. And she was waiting for a transplant and somebody introduced her to an integrative health person who put her on a two weeks diet of uh, you know, certain food and, you know, supplements and her liver regenerated. That was in 1992. She's still alive today. She has given birth to two other children and she never had a liver plant, transplant. Meaning that you can regenerate your liver. What can happen? What can go wrong with this perfect system? Hepatitis is one of the main things that affects the liver. It's inflammation of the liver tissue. It can be caused by virus, alcohol, immune response, drugs. A lot of the drugs we take, Tylenol, you know, um, all the uh, cold uh, um, um, uh, painkillers, they contain Tylenol. Cold medicine, they contain Tylenol. These things can go and damage your liver. Bacteria, protozoa, parasites. And that is why it's important. And then fatty liver as a result of obesity. We you know, look at a normal liver and see a fatty liver. Some of us, because you know, I told you that liver stores fat, you know, it stores, it's a, it's a storage system. And so the excess of what you are not using, it will be stored. And then it begins to get bigger. And then eventually when the cells are so damaged, it leads to cirrhosis, liver cirrhosis. How to keep your liver healthy? Check your consumption of alcoholic beverages. There are so many ways you take alcohol in fermented things. Please be careful of how much of that you are allowing to enter into your system. Eat a healthy diet. Exercise regularly because, they, because you need energy. You need your muscles need to work. Your body needs to, you know, you need oxygenation and is in movement. And we are going to look at another, I'm planning another talk which is activate your muscles, activate your brain. You know, motion, Kai, motion is so crucial. And we have left out motion because of our lifestyle now. We are living, we are driving cars, you know, we don't work anymore. We sit in the office and all of that. You cannot imagine, we will look at that. And it's not even, I don't even want to go into that. The importance of motion, avoid asset acetaminophen, thionol, which is found in many drugs like painkiller, prevent hepatitis, reduce exposure to toxins, and be careful of how you use your herbs and supplement also. And then I saw some interesting things that I just felt I would throw in there, some hepatoprotective agents, some natural things that protects against, that pro help protect the li liver. Um, you have the African basil, you know, okay, store scent leaves for those that are in Africa, if you mean, you have the African locust bean, you know, you have the bitter leaf. I had an amazing experience recently. I had this sugar rash 
because you know when i was young i overtook coca-cola and so my 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 metabolic uh, my 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 system the the part of my system that you know work on sugar crashed at that time and so i found out that bitter leaf has helped me to clear and i will share that testimony at another time um when we you know as we continue because i don't want to go into that now where we are talking about sugar woo, woo, woo. i will share about you know some <laughs> of my own journeys with sugar um you have barberry you have nutmeg can you imagine nutmeg nutmeg wonderful that little thing most times we just use a little of it to bake and that is all we forget about it but nutmeg can it helps with protecting the liver, chamomile, grapefruit, blueberries, cranberries, and then big blue cans that is, is anti-parasitic, anti-fungal. It can be found in barley, oatmeal. Imagine your oatmeal is, you know, is very important to your health. Um, and then I think I'm going to, because I wanted enough time for to have our doctor talk to us. So these are the questions that I'm going to be asking our doctor in the house. Welcome, doctor in the house. We are very, very glad to have you. And um, you can see the questions. Um, so these are some of the questions. I have spent time to give a good foundation to, for everybody to yes. understand why this is important. And so and my first question for you, doctor, is what has been your clinical experience with GIT problem? With, uh, and what are some of the common, common manifestations? Okay, Dr. Kino, thank you so much for having me. Did I do a um, good job? Sorry? Did I do a good job with my presentation? Oh, yes, what a great job. That's what the first thing I wanted to say. I mean, it's like you, you need to write a book on this. <laughs> so anyway, so it's been a great foundation that you have laid already. And I think you have said much of what needs to be said, but yet we will emphasize as much as possible, um, you know, from the clinical point of view, which I see, I think is the reason why you have me here. Um, first of all, let me start by re-emphasizing what you said at the very beginning, that we, this body that we have is an amazing machine. Um, a great uh, car, for instance, um, as an example, um, that needs to be serviced and needs to, um, the owner needs to know much about it. The no owner of the, of the body is entitled to know everything as much as possible, if not everything, about their own body and uh, become um, their own doctor first, their own first doctor, you know. So if we get to know the body, understand the body, listen to the body, respond to the body, we will find that we will not have need, so much need to run to the doctor, to the physician every now and then. Um, now coming back to your question, uh, what have been our clinical experience. I um, just before I say that, let me quickly touch on something that you mentioned along the line. Uh, you were asking about um, when well, you were talking about vitamin D, and uh, you talked about you know coming out in the sun. So very important. Vitamin D is a very vital nutrient. It's even a hormone, but it also serves as a vitamin. But it's so important that uh, these days, because a lot of people uh, have been put under lockdown, a lot of people spend more time in their offices, um, many are lacking in vitamin D. Um, some, uh, sometime, I think that was about, uh, let's say about uh, eight years ago, thereabout, um, I did some personal study on um, a lot of my clients checking their vitamin D levels here in Nigeria. And despite the fact that we have so much sun, I was amazed to find that many were deficient in vitamin D. 
And I could un now understand why um, a lot of diseases are really plaguing our people unknowingly. If you remember that in the old times, our grandfathers and grandmothers um, walked almost bare bodied. But now we are always so suited up <laughs> because we have imbibed a lot of the Western culture and Western way of dressing. Dr. Sam, you have, um, have okay, you are muted. Yeah, we'll be, okay. yeah, we're beginning to have problem, um, you know, with uh, some of the kind of things that vitamin D could have prevented. Okay, now let me come back to the question. Okay, so one thing I want to mention about the sun and vitamin D is that it is better to get vitamin D from the sun than from supplement. Mm. But when you cannot get much of the sun, then of course take supplements so that you must get vitamin D. Then again, important is what time of the day. You, you mentioned it. But uh, there's a way you can know the best time to come out for the sun. When you come out under the sun and your shadow is the same height with you or taller than you, then that is the best time to stay under the sun. Hmm. These days in Nigeria, it's uh, much earlier. So anywhere between 7.30 a.m. And from what I have observed, up to about 9.30 a.m., maybe 10 a.m., it's a good time. But after that, you will notice that your shadow begins to get shorter than you. That is not a good time to come under the sun. Thank you. Then again, in the evening, the shadow will lengthen again, which is what the time you were talking about. So this is a simple way you can know by yourself what is the best time to get vitamin D. And whenever you have um, um, some kind of privacy, the more you expose your body, the better vitamin D you get. Now, talking about clinical experiences with uh, gut problems, oh, I mean, it's, it's rife here. It's like everything, you know, um, starts with gut problems. Hmm. And uh, we've seen all kinds of things. But... Let me mention just a few from simple things like constipation and diarrhea, two extremes. Either people are constipated or they are having um, diarrhea. It's a very straightforward sign that there is a problem with the gut, the gastrointestinal tract. Um, sometimes people I ask my patients, I have a way of finding out how many times they move their bowel. And I ask how many times they move their bowel in a week. And you find some people saying that it is once in two or three days. I have even had people who say once in a week. <laughs> and you definitely know that this is where the problem is. Mm. Okay. For everyone who eats, you just must move your bowel the same day. In fact, if you eat two times a day, you need to move your bowel two times in a day. <laughs> so the minimum will be once a day, but anything less than once a day is just not correct. Okay, then there are other problems that come with gut issues. Um, there are uh, things like brain fog, some people find it difficult to think straight. They have foggy thinking and they don't know where it's coming from. I'm happy to say, uh, to hear that you are going to continue this series. And I know that in, in future sessions, you might be able to talk a little bit more about the relationship between the gut and the brain. That's that, yes, that's the next one. Yes, okay. Now there are, other problems, there are people who have seen people with irritable bowel syndrome, a situation where as soon as they are eating, they are going to the bathroom to move their bowel. And, um, yeah, 
again someone is someone, some yes. i'm sorry i think it's a okay so so um irritable bowel syndrome Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I will have to make sure that people are not. Let me hold on a little bit. I'm trying to find the person. Um, it's um, inking hot SDS. I think it's um, Ibrahim. I think you got unmuted. Can you mute yourself? Okay, you can continue. Okay, so uh, more of the problems um, we have seen, kind of clinical problems we see. There are people who have um, mental issues. And um, a lot of the times they are taken to the psychiatric hospitals and unknowingly, the problem is actually a gut problem. Mm -hmm. I have a case in hand right now a young man, the only son of his mother, and um, he's been a little pr much of a problem to the rest of the family. And every now and then he's been taken to the psychiatric hospital. Uh, but when they, one of the sisters consulted me, I, I let her know that I could see that the psychiatric hospital has done so much, but there is an area that we need to look into. And when I mentioned her, the gut, I mean, she was surprised. But I said, uh, uh, let's give it a try. Um, let me cut it short by saying that a few days ago, the sister called me to report that this young man is sounding much happier um, because he's been on medication, he's been on uh, psychiatric drugs for quite a while without seeing much of a response. Every now and then he breaks down. But since we began to look into his gut and try to do something about it, uh, the sister reports that he's much happier. He's now more willing to get back to find something to do for himself, which he never um, thought of. He's always uh, you know, kind of put off by anything. He doesn't want to do anything. Anyway, so you have mentioned the problem of, uh, let me just go on, uh, fatty liver is becoming a very common problem. And that, that is a gut issue, really. Um, before now, years ago, it used to be thought that fatty liver was much of a problem of alcohol. But now it is being found that uh, problem issues in the gastrointestinal tract is a very major contribution to fatty liver. What is now called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, there are a whole lot of problems, experiences that uh, we see, of course, things like cancer, many kinds of cancer, like you mentioned, are actually problems that were initiated because the gut has lost its place. Um, people have immune system problems, you know, frequent infections and all that. We could go on and on, but I'm sure time will fail us to mention <laughs> so much. Oh, thank okay. you. I have one or two questions here that I'm going to also ask. Um, so yeah. I'm going to throw two questions together because of our time. Okay. Somebody asks, can gut leak? Because I'm sure they've heard about what is called the leaky gut syndrome. <laughs> so <laughs> the person said, can gut leak? And what causes gut leakage? And, um, and then my own question is, how do you rehabilitate the gut? Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> yes, the gut can leak. And leaky gut syndrome <laughs> is a real disease. It, in fact, is becoming like an epidemic and the simple reason is just a lot of what you have said before uh, short of repeating them there are so many things that people put into their bodies without realizing their defects okay from what they eat to what they drink to the things that they use in the house like um, 
cleaning agents, you know, insecticides, and even some of the things that are contained in the, in the fruits. A lot of people are trying to eat fruits and vegetables, but much of it are being, um, are come out of, um, uh, you know, uh, gardens or farms that have, they have used insecticide, herbicides, and lots of fertilizer. You know, and a lot of these things affect the gut. Drugs, especially antibiotics, painkillers, mm. all some medications, um, not to mention, of course, uh, some of the harsh drugs that are used to treat cancer. Um, a lot of these drugs affect the digestive tract and make it and cause it to lose the natural balance, the homeostasis that you talked about, causing what we call dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means just a disorganized bowel system. Okay, so the um, stress is a point that must be mentioned. A lot of people are going through stress and stress is not just about the physical stress, but the emotional stress is a major reason why the gastrointestinal tract will get disorganized and can lead to things like leaky gut. So the gut can leak. What does it mean to, for the gut to leak? It means that the little gaps that are between the cells um, of the gastrointestinal tract have become widened to the point that some sizes of food particles that otherwise will not be able to get into the system of the body, um, will now be able to get in, in large sizes, leading to all kinds of reactions and uh, disturbances in the general system of the body. We have a lady who's been coming to us uh, because uh, she's really suffered the uh, leaky gut and she cannot almost like take any medication orally. Anything she puts into her mouth, she reacts. When she eats, at the very slightest change of diet, she'll start reacting. All kinds of bodies start swelling up. Okay, so what can you do to relax? There's so much that people can do, starting from looking into what they eat, okay? It's always the starting point. We have imbibed, I've said it too many times, many Africans have imbibed the Western way of eating. And this is the bane of our problem. My um, mantra in my clinic, my practice, is that start thinking about what your grandfather, your grandmother, your great-grandfather, your great-grandmother used to eat. And when you are able to discern the kind of things that you ate, you'll find that they never really had the kind of problems that we are having, okay? Um, in their days, uh, they never knew things like diabetes, not much of arthritis. Of course, cancer was nothing to, that was ever had in those days. Um, high blood pressure, they had no machines to check their blood pressure and they never had people just falling down and dying, <laughs> just anyhow, you know. So, so much depends on what we eat. Um, I am one of those who advocate for people to begin to think of having their own small gardens so that they can plant their own food. Um, even if it's just in small amounts, it is something good. So you can know the kind of thing that you are eating because it is what you put into the soil from where the plants grow, that's what we get into the body. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I may throw in this one, um, because uh, I, 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 I don't know how to say it properly, but let me just put it the way I think about it. Meat is good. Meat is something that should be eaten. And a lot of people have sometimes uh, have had people say, eat more of white meat. But I say, you need to 
follow that kind of advice with wisdom. A lot of the white meat that is available in our environment come from the poultry. And the poultry um, animals are raised with artificial feeds and, um, and they are given antibiotics. So sometimes the chicken and the turkey may not be the best of meat uh, <laughs> for us here. It does not mean that we may never touch them, but they may not be the best for us here, except you want to eat the ones that grow by, that are, go by free range, you know, that are not uh, in the poultry. Thank you. But yes, you know, so we need to take note of that. Yeah, yeah. I think because of our time, this is what I'm going to do, please. If um, everybody here, you know, you want to, because there are so many questions that because of time, we will not be able to answer. And if you want to be continue part, being part of this conversation, because some things we will send out through, I will answer some of these questions through WhatsApp. Please just indicate that, you know, because I sent a blind invite and I don't want to be bothering people all the time with flyers. If you know that you are enjoying this, you want us to continue sending you invites to be part of this, please indicate in the chat and say, I am interested. You know, I'm sure I have all your contacts, you know, just say, that's why you got this information. Just say, I am interested because everything you talked about, we are, this is just the beginning. We are going to talk about irritable bowel syndrome. We are going to, somebody asked about liver, about liver problems. Um, I'm going to put this uh, PowerPoint in the, how do you get liver disease? I'm going to put this PowerPoint on the website. You can go, this is recorded. You can go back and listen to it. I'm going to put this PowerPoint on, uh, on our website. You will see the link to the web website also. You, you can go and check. I've written everything, how you get disease from the, you know, how you get, how you hurt your liver. Um, the final thing, because our time is up, um, the final thing that um, I want to talk about here is that somebody had asked, um, one, we talked about emotional stress. That is big. And um, this is a holistic health talk. So we are not going to only be talking about physical health. We are going to be talking about emotional health. We are going to be talking about marital health. And all, our, all of this impacts the body. You know, so, I mean, this is, a, this is going to be an amazing journey. You know, my goal, what is my goal? Is raising wellness advocates. Everyone, you can speak for your health and for the health of others. And but you need information. You need to know what to do. It's not depends on you whether you do what you need to do. But you will not say, I don't have the information. My goal, my, my, my desire is to provide you with the information, with, with the examples, with the resources to take the right decision. It's now up to you to take that right decision. Somebody mentioned detoxification, and that's where we are going to close um, because we have overshot our time. Um, because this is a, such an interesting topic. And as I said, the next topic, we are looking at the gut and the brain. Amazing. And we are also going to look at the thyroid, you know, the adrenals, how all of this fits together, you know, adrenal stress, how all of this fits together. It will make you healthy or unhealthy. Now, detoxification. Somebody asked here, is that um, is liver detoxification necessary? I would say one thing and allow doctor to close on that. One thing I say here is that, you know, um, if you don't clean out, it's important that remember your body is self-maintaining and self-cleaning. And you need to put in the right thing for the body to clean itself. And so I do detox. You know, and if you need to learn more about that from me, um, please reach out to me and I will, I will share with you uh, the kind of detox programs I do. I do detox regularly. I go on a particular detox called Ultimate Body Cleanse once a year. And then apart from that, I do a regular detox. Like recently, I've just been using bitter leaf, um, um, bitter tea from Park Sabal you know, to detox, to, and it has been amazing. And um, I use an um, apple cider vinegar. And, um, and so we will talk more about all the natural things. Somebody said this is difficult to maintain in Nigeria. No, it's not. The body is, is, as, is not as complex as you think. We just need to have good reorientation. We can go back to doing the right thing. Dr. Olufumilayo, please, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Can you mute yourself, Olufumilayo? 
Um, doctor, finally, one last word concerning the talks and then we can go. Okay. So very quickly, um, detoxification, especially detoxification of the liver, is a must. Okay. Um, are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Detoxification and especially detoxification of the liver is a must. I think someone wrote a book saying uh, that it titled Detox or Die. Okay, so suggesting that if you do not regularly detox, the tendency is that death will be um, knocking at your door very soon. They, uh, the other day I had someone um, try, I was trying to explain the, why it is necessary to detox. And I said, if you buy a car and you've been driving it for five years, and you've never sent it to a service center, you've never changed the oil and all that, what do you think will happen? A day will wake up, I mean, will come, you will wake up, you kick the car and it will not answer you or you're driving along the road and it will stop. So detoxification is similar to having to service your car. And in fact, detoxification of the liver is servicing the most important organ in the body. There are so many things that we wanted to mention about some of the things that people uh, experience, not knowing that the simple issue is that their liver is not detoxified. And let me, something comes to mind very quickly. Some people experience swollen legs and they don't know where it's coming from. I know there are so many things that can cause swollen legs, including kidney, heart problems, allergies, but one important one that is often not looked into is liver congestion. And that is one reason why people must detoxify their liver. How do you detoxify the liver? You've mentioned one big one that uh, uh, which I totally agree with, use of the products. But there are simple things people can do without, before even going to supplements. And that is to fast, okay? To go on raw food for some days, uh, as long as they can go, and then they break again. And after some time, they start again eating no cooked food, okay? And uh, that will help, and drinking water, of course. That will help to detoxify the liver. One other thing that I recommend very often in my practice is something called coffee enema. It's very good, um, very easy to do, and it's very good to use to detoxify the liver. An enema is anything you pass through the anus, but then this time in coffee enema, you use an organic coffee that you prepare in a particular way and then you pass the liquid into your, um, through your anus, into your body, while lying down on your right-hand side, which is where the liver is. And this will detoxify your liver, especially when you do it often. I have one quick testimony that may come as a surprise to many. A lady called me from Calabar, Nigeria, complaining of hernia. Some people ask me, do women have hernia? I say, yes, <laughs> but a particular type of hernia. And I suggested to her, why don't you start coffee enema? And she started doing that. And after a number of weeks, she was examined again and the hernia was nowhere to be found. What was it that was causing the problem? The liver was congested and the lymphatic system was stagnated, causing the things that are inside the bowel to begin to push out, you know, through the skin, and that is hernia. But as soon as she was able to clean up the liver, detoxify the liver, the hernia went away. Now, that does not mean that if you have Hernia, you just go away uh, just doing uh, uh, liver detoxification. You must see your doctor because there are different kinds of hernia. But I just give that as a, uh, an extreme example. So. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Thank you so much. Um, I know there's so much. I mean, I'm bombarded with so many questions here that <laughs> honestly, 
um, there's so much and I'm, I'm glad. Um, I know Molly, uh, you had your hand up. Um, are you okay or, you know, um, um, yes, I saw one hand up, yeah, anyway. Um, but um, we, we can go on and on and on, but I want to say thank you, Dr. Um, Sam. Um, um, what do you call it? Um, is it okay for us to share your contact if um, someone, people want to reach you to find out more, yeah. to ask questions? You know, so maybe on the, if on the chat, if you can please go ahead and share your contact on the chat. Um, I've shared our website. I'm going to I'll put my email, uh, our email, info yeah. at, um, at the educator, ng, info at the educator, ng.org. Um, <clears throat> please, in case you go to the website immediately, you're not going to get it because I'm, I will not have posted any of this. So please give us a day or two. To, before you can see the post. Um, and then yeah. you can email me info at the educator ng.org if you have any questions um, that, um, that um, you, you, you want to ask. Uh, and, then, and then if you need to talk with me, um, as I said, we continue with this series next week and um, we are going to dissect, I'm going to answer many of these questions that I have here. And these questions will even become topics for other, <laughs> um, other sessions. We are going to dissect the, 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 the um, detoxify. We are going to look more at detoxification like you asked, the emotional stress, brain, gut, and all of that. So I hope you've enjoyed this time. Um, I hope it has been worth your while. And um, please um, um, send me a message, you know, telling me how, you know, what questions you have, what you feel we need to do more. Um, we are on, let me quick. Who can melt the hardest heart And speak life into my soul And who can spend the 